Hey guys, welcome to uh, the Craig and Ryland Review Show Special. A little bit of a different intro this week because it is a review show special. Me and Ryland are going to be looking and taking an in-depth look at David Penn. <gasps> Now, David was at the Blackpool Magic Convention, and he had a whole bunch of magic oh, elves. Uh, he, uh, he had Chill 2.0 that World Magic Shop were bringing out on behalf of Tom Wright, your friend Tom Wright. Uh, he also had the uh, Mystery Solved Nest of Boxes, which we did not pick up, but it's something that we might look at in the future. But he did have another three items. He had five items altogether. Uh, he had the Oddest Ball... Cube through head. Cube through head. And the Covenant deck that he did with your friend, Mark Spellman, a.k.a. X. And so yeah, what I we think, thought... I think I got a free one of them. Yes, you did. In fact, we you've performed it and we're reviewing it on this show. We gave you one when you bought an Oddest Ball and a Cube through head. No, you just gave me one for free. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. When I went over to stand on my own. Really? Yeah. You gave me one as well. Oh. When I bought Cube through head and Oddest ah, Ball. Ah, you had to buy stuff I didn't. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Whatever. Um, well, this is a review show special looking at all th th those three of David's effects. So we have, we're not going to be looking at Chill. We're not going to be looking at uh, the Nesta, Nesta boxes, boxes. But we are going to be looking at the other three. So if you're interested in uh, why all of David Penn's tricks sold out at Blackpool Magic Convention, if you're interested in whether the new tricks that David Penn bought out are for you or not, then this is absolutely the review show that you need to be looking at. And we're going to be starting with really? the Oddest Ball. <gasps> so let's have a look at the Oddest Ball first that's, of all. That's so funny. That's so one of your favourite tricks. Now, I'll tell you right now, the Oddest Ball... It's just making me laughing. The Oddest Ball went straight into Ryland's show. And when I say straight into Ryland's show, I mean straight into his show. So he got <laughs> it at the Blackpool Magic Convention. And you taught it me yes. on the day yes. that I was performing it. No, 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 it wasn't. It was, yeah, the day, it, was. it was the day before you started looking at it. No, you showed me it in the morning and you said, do you want to do it tonight? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so on the Monday, um, uh, after the Blackpool Magic Convention, on the Monday, uh, said, Ryland oh, was doing... No, no, no. In the evening, Ryland was doing uh, the after party for the Blackpool Magic Convention the at House the House of Secrets. Secrets. And there were two yeah. halves. The first half was Matt yeah. doing his mentalism show, which he... Killed. He did really well with it. Mm -hmm. And then the second half was you doing some yeah. uh, your your act, and you were putting a load a yeah. load of new stuff in there. And one of the things that you were putting in there was the oddest ball. No, you put in cue the cue the magic. Yeah, cue the magic. Yeah. And you, and you, I showed him oddest ball in the morning. I was like, have a look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I was like on my phone. I was like excited for tonight. I was like on my phone watching videos of GTA, and because I like watching it. So. Yeah. Upgrading to the best cop car in GTA 5. Because his mum won't let him buy GTA because he's oh, too young. There. Get on with it. Yeah, and then anyway, um, and then after that, uh, I just heard a bunch of like noises and they just carried on. It's like, <laughs> vroom, 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 vroom. And so I just carried on, and then and then the, and then you just came over to me and said, "Do you want to see what I bought?" And I went, "Sure." Came over and said, "Look at all this electrics." And he said, "Look away," and, and then just had a box and he's like, "Right." And he showed me the trick, and then I picked the red ball up when it wasn't looking, because uh, uh, he said, like, I'll tell you when you pick the red ball up. So eventually I picked the red ball up, and, then, and I was like, oh, my God. It is hilarious. It is the funniest gag ever. So you immediately said, I want to put that into my show. Yeah. You spent the day scripting it and coming up with a routine for it. And what I loved about the show is, right, uh, is Matt, did the, uh, Matt did the mentalism show in the first half, Yep. And so in the second half, you went into this about halfway into your act going, now Matt did mentalism. I think I can do mentalism better than Matt. Yeah. And I'm going to prove it to you. And what made it even better is Matt hadn't seen the oddest ball. He didn't know what it was. He'd not heard of it before, which made it even better. So I've got the performance from the House of Secrets, which is amazing. So I'm going to show you that performance right now. Have a look at this. This is Ryland perform the oddest ball live at the Blackpool Magic Convention. All right, now I'm going to get someone to help me. And that person is going to be Matt. Because you see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some mentalism. And it's going to be. <laughs> and it's going to be way better than this. Um, so, Matt, to do this. First of all, no. <laughs> I'm off the clock. And baby, what do you mean mentalism? Right, you're going you're gonna to stand there. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Don't clap this. Now, uh, uh, my mentalism is way 
way better than yours, as you know. So, right here... <laughs> Don't, actually. <laughs> um, right, so here we have uh, five uh, golf balls. I nearly said the wrong thing there. Uh, five golf balls. And uh, what... <laughs> so five golf balls. And um, as you can see, one of them is red and four of them are white. What you're going to do is repeatedly, you're going to pick up a white golf ball and say, I have a ball. <laughs> You're going to say I have a ball, and I'm going to tell you it's a white ball. And then we're going to do it again. You can pick up another one and you say, um, I have a ball. And then I'm going to say, it's a white ball. And you can do that again. You can pick up the same one, I have a ball. You do this over and over again, uh, I have a ball. And then whenever you want, what I want you to do is I want you to pick up the red one and say, I have a ball. And I'm going to try and figure out when you pick the red one up, okay? Not a prayer. Right, okay. Look, I won't cheat. I won't cheat. Look, I'll even blindfold myself. Look, I have a blindfold. And I have nothing in my hand, as you can see. I'll even stick my hands up. Right. So, Matt, go. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> right, Matt, you pick a ball. <coughs> You're going to pay for this. I have a ball. That's a white one. I have a ball. It's a white one. I have a ball. It's also a white one. How long has he got left? <laughs> <laughs> How long can we make this go for? <laughs> it's like YouTube royalties. I have a ball. Uh, it's also a white one. Yeah, it's a white one. So, that performance was brilliant. That was absolutely hilarious. Uh, what do you think of the Oddest Ball? I think it's really funny. It's a big prop. It's a big yeah. prop. It's in it's, essence... It's, it's, no, it's not actually a big prop. It just come, it has to go in a big box. To keep it safe? Yeah. It's basically a gag. It's the funniest thing ever. It is a hilarious gag. You saw the reaction from the audience. The second you build it up like it's this really serious thing, like I'm gonna listen to your, I'm gonna listen to the sounds, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up on some things that you won't be able to pick up on, and I'll know when you've picked up the red ball. You really set it up as this serious thing, and then when the red ball gets picked up, the whole unit, it shakes, it vibrates, it's, it's. I just stood up and went. You have the Red Bull! It's very funny. It's very, very funny. Uh, very funny, in fact. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you just said that. I know, but I can't, I can't not say anything. Yeah, it's, it's so, so funny. funny. It's, it's, right, so let me... How easy is it to do? Pick up a Red Bull. Well, you don't even have to do anything. Just set it up, and you're good to know. <laughs> yes. There is nothing to it, as long as you present it well. As long as you charge it up. That's it. As long as you charge it up and you present it well, you're good to go. Um, it's all self-contained. It's really well made. The wood and everything, it's just beautifully made. Um, the question is, could a serious mentalist do that? Or does it have to be a magician? Do, that's the question I'm asking. Because on the tutorial, David says that you could do it as a mentalist in between more serious pieces. So you've done some serious mentalism. You do this to lighten the move, and then you go back to serious mentalism. Do you think that's the case, yeah. or do you think it needs to be I like think you be quite did funny it? If you're a magician, and like, right, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some serious mentalism. Here. Well, that's how you presented it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. People ask me if I can do serious mentalism. Yes, I can. <laughs> Watch think, this. Most people think that kids can't do mentalism. I can. <laughs> Watch. So here. <laughs> do you think this would work in a kids show? Or do you think kids would be like, oh, I heard it, I heard it. Or do you think they'd get the gag? Or... I don't think they'll get it. They'll be like, oh, I I'm it. When I'm talking about kids, I'm not yeah, talking yeah. your age. I'm yeah, talking, I'm talking about, like, like five, four, six. Four, five, yeah. Four, five, That's six. That's what I'm thinking. Like, they would probably go, I heard it, I heard it. You're cheating. <laughs> cheating. I do you cheater. My just showing you cheater. Why, why are you cheating? Is it a little Why are you cheater? <laughs> okay, okay. You're so 
weird. Um, you asked me my opinion. Yeah, you're right. Um, for a family audience, though, for a uh, like a corporate like, audience, yeah, an adult not, audience, like eight, nine, ten, they would get it. No, oh, they get it. They're funny, hilarious. Your mates at school would get it. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. So it's easy to do. Uh, it, it packs away really nicely. You know, it's going to last a lifetime. You can tell it's been made by TCC. They're great. Yeah. It's just, it's not cheap. It's over a hundred quid because of all the electronics and the size of the thing and what's the materials that have been used to make it. So the question is, do you want to spend a hundred quid on what is in essence a gag in your show? Yeah. I know. I think yes. I think. <laughs> yeah. Everybody who watched your show, and you did some beautiful things in that show. You did the flying linking rings. You did the. I did, and the gag was pretty funny. You did the flying linking rings. You did the dancing cane. You did the cube wall. You did some beautiful stuff. But man, my two favourite moments in that show was the oddest ball and the suit jacket escape. <laughs> it's just my two favourite parts in the whole show. You didn't show. even get to see my uh, one of the best gags I did. Everyone laughed at it. What was that? The. What? Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh no, I did see it. Oh. Yeah, you saw it afterwards. You saw it I afterwards. don't even know where that came from. In the middle of his show, he's like... No, Gary and me had had it planned for like, since we messed up him, like at the start of that Oh my gosh. He, he had this bottle of Jack, mini bottle of Jack Daniels. And he's like, in the middle of his show, he's like, I'm feeling quite thirsty. Um, and he just took out this little mini bottle of Jack Daniels and just necked it. And you go, oh, that's better. Oh, right. And it was, it was... It was like ginger beer or something in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, so, Honest Ball, what are you giving it? Uh, did we show the performance? Yeah, we did. Yeah, didn't yeah, we? 100%. Yeah, we yeah, 100%. I agree. 100%. There's I two agree. ways I could, be, I could be saying that. As in, like, 100% as in, like, I'm going to give it 100%. Or you said, we did do it, didn't we? I'm like, yeah, we, we 100% put it in. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm giving it 100%. Yeah, I'm giving it 100%. He's giving it 100%. It's absolutely brilliant. It's amazing. It's That's amazing. your first review on your David Penn review show special. It's the oddest ball. Now let's move on to the cube through head. So cube through head, right? This is the next one. Mm -hmm. Now, in all honesty, I went over to David at the beginning of the convention because I knew his stuff would sell out. It always does. And I went with one mission in mind to get a cube through head. Because I was like, I know. I got a cube stuck in my head. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, I know Ryland will love the cube through head. So I went over there, and then when he showed me the oddest ball, I'm like, oh, I think Ryland would love that as well. So I ended up getting the oddest ball and the cube through head for you. And then you got something else. Oh, no, yeah, I got the, the covenant deck, yeah. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. The cube through head, you've looked at it, you watched the tutorial. I learned five I've tricks. I learned five tricks while he learned one. While I was learning my five and, tricks for the review show, and, he spent two hours learning the cube through head and setting it all up. And, and what? Yours was like two minutes and mine was like four Yeah, I did luck out on that. And then I had to and then I had to stick all the stickers on, and then I watched it twice because it confused me, then I got it, Guess then what? I showed it to you, and then it was another four five minutes of Guess what? Mm. I'm gonna make you learn evoke so you can review that. I know I'm not long. Nine I'm hours, Ryland. Nine like, hours. I'm in I've got an excuse. What? I'm not a mentalism. You just reviewed a mentalist trick? Yeah, because it's a gag! <laughs> Got me. Tell everyone about cube through head. Go for it. Um, uh, it, it just looks really cool. Cause you, you said, oh, that's great. Great, great, great synopsis shut up. there. Shut up. Yeah, so this is a gag that um, he, he actually uses. He says, you've ever worked with a net and you like, you like point at a woman? Because, like, a net is a word for a woman. Yeah, it's a name, a net. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. had a friend called a net. Yeah. And then, and then you, and then, and then you bring out a net. Like, ah. isn't it? And then it's like, it's like, everyone just laughs at it. And then, and then what you do is you say, I got the, you bring out the tube, you show they're empty, you do it, and then you put the cube inside the tube, you can see the cube, and then, whoop, it's gone through the head, it comes out the other side, and then you can show both tubes completely empty. That's sick, really, when you yeah. think about it. I mean, that's like, really, really like, good. It's like their head is blocking the way. You can like, show it that way. And you see their head. And you see their head. And then whoop, it comes out. And the and reason for like, the net show, is because they're holding the net. Their arms are crossed, yeah, like, aren't if, they? If, yeah, if it's like not this, like this, and it's going to It's going to come out. And it's going to go. It's going to break. So, so the net is there so that your arms are crossed. And when the, the, the cube comes out, and it, it comes lands out, in And it lands the... in the net. Now, the only thing is you don't get a net with it, do you? No. We've had to buy a net, a little collapsible. You can get yeah, collapsible fishing net. nets for about five quid. Yeah. 
So that's we, yeah, interesting. Yeah, we, we, we went on Amazon and bought a net. Yes. So here's the... Uh, you let's, didn't get it, do you? Yes, I did. I just didn't find it funny. Let's, let's let's have a look Shut at the performance of Ryland doing this. That's me. Um, and then when we've had a look at performance, we'll talk about the ins and outs. Hey, my friend Matt, and I'm going to show him David Penn's amazing cube for head. Okay, so I've got um a net here. What? What? Cube through head? Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm saying. Look, I want you to take your left hand and I want you to hold the metal on the edge, okay, and then cross your arms. Like that. Yeah. Okay, and as well as that, I also have two empty tubes. As you can see, two empty tubes. So we've got uh, Matt holding the net, two empty tubes, and we also have a Rubik's Cube. Okay? Obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, as you can see through the through the holes, you can also see that this cube, uh, this tube is uh, completely empty. And you can see, uh, I can put the tube in, and it's not uh, anything special, it falls right out the bottom. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put the tube against your head with the cube inside it. So look, you can see that the cube uh, will go that way so you can see it better you can see that the cube goes right in there like that so you can see it well you can't but they can and then <laughs> we're gonna go like that and we're gonna put this against matt's head like that and you can see Ooh. the cube you ready three two one and you can see that it actually goes right through matt's head <laughs> Oh, hang on. It's not. It's not right. <laughs> now, this is not a close up trick, is it? Mm, no. This is not the sort of thing that you can do close up. This is more of a no, stage and, piece. And you can't, like, have. Because if you did close up, you'll probably have, like, people all around. They would see the other cube on the other side of the head. Okay, right. So, so you, you like, have to do it, like, that's the stage. Here's the person. You do it. Right. Well, you do it that way. We do it that okay, way. but the angle. But if you're on stage, yeah. are the angles an issue or not? Uh, uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. No. And unless it's like the house of secrets, and it's like you have the person having to f face the center, and then the people like can see. The but even then, you could probably block it. I imagine. Yeah, maybe. Could you? Yeah, probably. Now, David has a full performance at the Magic Circle, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. On the project, he does a full performance at the Magic Circle, and he actually incorporates this into a longer routine, doesn't he? Do like a cube solve? Yeah, he and... does. Um, he does Venom Cube, Bob. He does Venom Cube. Mm -hmm. So does he open with this and then go into Venom Cube and then go into? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then go into something else, uh, a cube solve, I imagine, or something like that. Okay, so you can build this into a longer cube set if you want to. Now, in terms of how difficult it is, how difficult is it, Ryland? Uh. Not that difficult. No? It's just turn the tube over. Yeah. Well, no, put the cube in. Turn the tube over. Well, no, show the tube's empty. Put the cube in. Turn the tube over. You can see it goes to the bottom. So you can see the cube. And you say, right, so you can see the cube. Watch. And then you put, you say, oh, I'm going to put it in. You can see it. And then they can see it. And then their head is completely blocking it. It's there. And then it should get stuck there, but it goes right through the head. It comes out, and you can show this tube completely empty. That's great. So it's like a mini illusion, really. Yeah. Um, how difficult is this? Oh, speaking of illusions, I forgot to ask you. Did you see the Magic Circle illusion at Blackpool? Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, using those. Well, I can't say how it works, but it's really cool. Yeah, very clever. It looks so real. Mm -hmm, it really does. It's very, very good. Really good. Um, what was I saying? Um, how difficult is it to set everything up? Because you spent ages setting stuff up, but you said that... The best thing that humans ever invented were included with this trick or something? Hmm? Something to do with the stickers? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've seen these a lot. And, like, people, like, stickering their cubes. Um, they use, they use uh, these things where you've got the stickers. They're in the formation of the cube. And then you grab this, like, sticker sheet. You just put it on. Like, it's like a sticker sheet. Like, a sticky sheet, not sticker sheet. And then you peel it off and you've got all the nine pieces. You put it on the cube and it matches it up exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And then I, and then I took both of them. I put stickers on it. Mm -hmm. So it looked like the shape of a cube, but it was lines. And I just went... I know you did. I saw you were fun. walking around with it all day. Um, so... It was fun. So where where is this best suited for? And would you do this in your act? Uh, yes. Uh, stage. Okay. Well, no. Stage, yes. So yes, you would do it. And it's really best for stage. 
No, it's best for stage, and yes, I would do it. Okay. You got it the wrong way around. Sorry. Like me. Would you work in, would this work in a kid's show? I could see it working. Yeah, yeah, they'll think it really funny. It's like, Whoa. I can imagine you could do it like with a lot of gags. Like, okay, I need somebody who's big and brave because I'm going to push a Rubik's Cube through their head. Who's big? Oh, yeah, he, who's uses, brave? he, uses, he uses another gag, and it's like, let's hope those ears are empty. Yes, that would. Let's hope those ears are empty. <laughs> See, that would work in there. Did you know David Penn was the uh, Children's Entertainer of the Year back in the day? Yeah, uh, yeah I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, mm. On top of all of his other awards as well. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, um, I wouldn't do this because I don't really do much with cubes on stage other than Cube Buster. It's really the only thing that I do. Um, but I do like this. I do think this is very, very good. I just wouldn't do it in my show. So I'm going to give it 79%, which is the highest mark that I can give something if I'm not going to do it. I think it's brilliant. I think it'll work great in a kid's show. I think it'll work great in a family show. I think it'll work great in a corporate show. You can see by looking at the live performances on the video that David has worked this in and then some. Uh, and he's taken a classic, an old classic, and reworked it for the modern age and made it really, really practical. Now, with just two wooden tubes and a cube, you can literally do an illusionette right there on stage for anybody, and it, it plays a lot bigger. Yeah. Getting somebody involved like that, getting a kid sitting there, getting them involved with it, or getting an adult, it plays a lot bigger than yeah, another really card cool. trick. So I'm giving it 79%. What would you do it? Because I know you've said that you would definitely do it. Uh, I'm going to give it 99. 99%? 99%. Yeah, nine, nine. So there you go. That's the cube through your head. 99% for Ryland and 79% uh, and for me. We're now going on to the final trick in this week's review show special. It's the Covenant deck. Okay, so the Covenant deck was created by David Penn and Mark Spelvin. It's Mark Spelvin's name's on this because... Um, David came up with the concept of the Covenant deck and then went to watch Mark Spellman do a lecture and Mark used a move which revolutionised the handling of the Covenant deck from uh, David's point of view. So David and Mark then collaborated and came up with a whole bunch of routines and a whole bunch of ideas and the tutorial is shot with David and with Mark um, and they're going through everything with a fine tooth comb. They're in Mark's studio. You can see the X mask in the background. The production quality is great. It's about an, a one hour tutorial. There's lots of live performances, so you can see this stuff being done in a live close up and parlor show situation. Um, so, what is it? Well, the Covenant deck is basically a fully gimmicked deck. It is a specially printed deck that was originally designed for two things, but it can do an awful lot more. Now, the first thing that the Covenant deck will do is you can literally spread the cards and show that they're all different. Mm -hmm. You can then have them uh, take uh, that. You can then give them the cards and have them peek into the deck and look at any card at any position in the deck. And you will have forced them onto one of four cards. Mm -hmm. Now, the original way that David Penn designed this, which is a really clever thing, is he designed it initially for a toss that deck style routine but without a deck switch so he originally designed it so you could show all of the cards as different wrap an elastic band around it have someone stand up have them peek look at a card hand them somebody else have them peek look at a card hand them somebody Why else someone picks the same card? Hmm? Why someone picks the same card? you don't do toss that deck do you um this isn't a place to discuss this but i'll explain another you time no 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 honestly you don't want to, I don't want to get into method, and it makes absolutely no difference. I'll tell you why afterwards. Okay? I'll, I'll explain why afterwards. I'm not, going to get into, I'm not going to get into method of toss that deck now. But what happens is what? you have four people, and they each peek anywhere into the deck that they want to, and they look at a card. I'm confused. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you later. They peek anywhere they want to, and they look at a card, right? So yeah. four people are looking at cards. Once the four people have looked at cards, then um, you have them stand up and you name four cards. And what happens is three of the people sit down, one person remains standing. So you've named three people's cards. You then say to the last person, come up on stage and you spread out the deck in between. Uh, you spread out the deck and you say, look, concentrate on your card. And you show that the card's gone from the deck and the final card's gone from the deck and you reach into your pocket and you pull it out. And that's the toss that deck presentation. Now, the other way that you can use this um, is, and the way that David originally designed it, was for a um, multiple selections routine. 
So David uses this as a four card multiple selection routine when he's doing banquet. So what he does is he brings out the deck, he shows that all the cards are different. Now the nice thing about the Covenant deck is no matter where somebody touches, if you take four cards out from that position and show them, they're going to be the four force cards, even though every card looks different, which is just beautiful the way it works. So you can have somebody literally touch anywhere and you can show the four cards and have four people remember the cards and then you can go into a multiple selection routine and David goes through his favourite multiple selection routine. He finds a card, he has one card appear under the card box uh, it's a, a almost self-working way of doing the multiple card find. I love multiple card find. I've done it for years. This is the easiest way of doing the multiple card find I've ever seen because there's no force. There's no control of the cards. They can literally see that all the cards are different. They can touch anywhere they want to. At that point, you can show the four cards to people and then without any controls or any full shuffles or anything, you're into the renovation, re revelation section, which is cool. Now, you don't know what Tossed Out Deck is, and you didn't watch the first half of the tutorial, obviously, if you're confused. But I know what you did watch is the bit where uh, they can peek at a card and make it disappear. Yeah. Now, this is what this deck is great for as well. And this is where Mark Spellman came in. So you can show the cards as different. You can have them push one card forward and have a peek of it, uh, which was the Mark Spellman idea. And then with no moves, you can show that card's vanished and it appears anywhere you want to. You can have it appear in your pocket. On the tutorial, there's a live performance of David and he does this. It's really great. He has someone think of a card. He has someone peek at a card and look at a card. And he, he, says, he cuts the deck a couple of times and he puts one card under his hand. And he says, look, is your card gone? And they go, yeah. And he does this. And they don't even say their card. And they go, and he does this, and it looks like the card's vanished. And he's working in a restaurant, and there's a tablecloth on there. And he goes, no, it's not vanished. Watch. And he takes a jug of water and pours some of the water over the tablecloth. And when he does, it now makes that tablecloth see-through. And you can see a card is now underneath the tablecloth. And he still hasn't asked them the name of their card, and he reaches under the tablecloth, and he takes out that card. It's beautiful. Oh, that's good. It's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> Ryland has been playing around with this in the context of doing it as a think of a card, I'm going to make it disappear. We're going to show them a performance of it. Yes. Could you do instead of like actually like doing the tossed out deck? Could you do like like the like like a tossed out deck, but with a marked deck? You could, couldn't you? What do you mean? So like you do it, but instead of like tossing it out and saying pick a card, you're like go over to them and you say touch a card. And then they do it. You can like they can freely choose any card. Yeah. So you know what the cards are. You name three of them, and then you know which ones you're naming. So the top card, you just palm out and put it in your pocket. Yeah. Could you do that? Yeah. That's so cool. If you did card tricks, you could try that out. I don't. I know you don't. No. But let's have a look at a video of Ryland doing a card trick on social media. You <gasps> lying little sausage. Oh no. Okay, so I've got my dad behind the camera, and I have a pack of cards. Okay, so um. Uh, Dad, what I want you to do is, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to touch any one of these cards. Anyone? Anyone. Run your finger along and touch anyone. That one That one. Are you sure? That one there, that yeah. That one. Okay, so have a little peek at it. Just a peek? Yeah, just a peek. Okay, so I don't know what that is, yeah? No, you, you don't. You can agree, I don't know what that is. No. Yeah. Now, uh, so you can see. Now, was your, high, was your card a high card or a low card? It was a high card. It was a high card, okay? What's this? Has your card vanished from the deck? Uh, yes, it has. It has disappeared. It's disappeared. Okay, well, the thing is, I, 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 at the very beginning, I put a card in my pocket. You can actually see... Oh, don't do this. That, that card... No. Well, what was your card? I don't even know It was know the eight, card. eight of clubs. Eight of clubs, are you sure? Yeah. I got the eight of clubs. What? So there's Ryland doing a card trick, so you know that every time you meet him at a convention and he goes, I don't do card tricks, he's a liar, because that's him doing a card trick. Yeah. But it is a very good card trick. It is a great trick. Mm -hmm. Self-working, uh, very easy to do. Now, there's things that you need to be aware of, obviously. The first thing to be aware of is this deck is not examinable. The reason it's not examinable is because it's a specially printed deck, and if they went through it, they would see how the deck works. However... The way that the routines are constructed, the way that the things are constructed that they go through on the tutorial, you're not going to have to worry about that because nobody, there's never any focus on the deck if you actually think about it. Like that routine that you did there, 
You know, they're just peeking at a card. It feels so fair. That there's no emphasis. There's always an emphasis somewhere else. It's it's very cleverly constructed by Mark and uh, and David. And honestly, the um, uh, the multiple selection routine is the easiest way to do that. I love multiple selection. I do it in almost every banquet performance. And that is the easiest way to do multiple selection that I've ever seen in my life. I love this. Uh, I really do. I really, really like this trick. Um, I'm yeah. definitely going to do it. Uh, which is why I'm giving it 100%. I think out of everything that I've seen, this is my favourite. I do toss that deck. This is the best way I've ever seen to do toss that deck. This toss that deck is amazing because they can literally, uh, you know, you can show all the cards are different, wrap the elastic band around it and literally have them look anywhere they want to. Best toss that deck I've ever seen. Best multiple selection I've ever seen. And if you just want to do it for the sort of thing that you saw Ryland do, you can do that as well. 100% for me, what are you giving it? Is that because you don't do card tricks, even though I just saw you do a card trick? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. 79% uh, from Ryland, 100% from me. It is exceptional and uh, highly recommended, as you would expect from David Penn and Mark Spellman. Let's wrap this up. Oh, 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 oh.